Hi, welcome to Denigo Dad. I'm Mark. We're back here at Wagon 84, Denigo Railway Heritage Centre, to continue on with the work on the Pedigo layout. So hello to all the subscribers, new and old, and a special hello to my channel members. If you'd like to become a channel member, links are down below. Now let's get on with the layout. Here we are in the wagon at the extension on the Pedigo layout. You can see I've constructed a shelf which sits over the track to protect the track and it's something I can build my hillside scenery up to. And you can see here the shelf is going to have the display cabinet sitting on top which will be displaying the models we have here at the centre. This shelf is just constructed of a spare bit of ply I had. It's 9mm ply and some 2x1s just cut up to support it. It's a good idea to do something like this if you're doing scenery. It gives good protection to the track but also there's enough gap there that if I need to I can get my arm down to retrieve any uh, uncoupled wagons, that sort of thing, anything that derails. So to construct the hillside I'm going to use a couple of different methods so you can see the different types of construction you can use to create a hillside. So I'm going to use some wire mesh, some of the Celatex insulation, just some newspaper, some cardboard formers, just so you can see the different methods used to give you the hillside shape. So I'm going to split it into sections and do each section with each method. Uh, so let's get started. We'll start with using the cardboard formers. Here's the first method for forming a hillside or doing any sort of scenery. This is just some bits of cardboard cut out to shape, held together with some skewers. You can pick these up in most supermarkets. These are bamboo skewers for about a, a quid a pack. You can see I've cut them to various shapes not all identical, just to give hillside, concave, and then you can just take that and slot it into position, like so. So now what I'll do is I'll do the other types of scenery, but all this will be covered with uh, plaster cloth. So at the end when I've done all the different uh, methods for creating the, the hillside, I'll do the plaster cloth over the top and I'll tell you about another method you can use instead of plaster cloth as well. So on to the next method. So this is probably the quickest and easiest way to give uh, a hillside some shape. All it is, screwed up newspaper with a couple of layers of masking tape over it. Again, newspaper you can get for free, masking tape, it's a quid in the pound shops. Um, you don't have to use newspaper, you can use um, plastic, bubble wrap, anything that will give it shape. As long as it's clean and dry, you can use it. I've also put a piece of cardboard at the back there, you can see, which is just to stop it being pushed back onto the track. So that's the second method to say that's probably the easiest and quickest, and most people will have this material lying around the house anyway. So on to the third method. So here's the third method. This stuff here is called Solitex. It's the insulation board you usually find in housing construction. It comes in various sizes. What I do, cut it roughly into shape, put it together, pin it together with, uh, again, bamboo skewers, and then just using a knife, just carve it to shape. Now I find this is better for when you want to make rock faces. You can do hillsides, but there's a lot of carving and a lot of mess, as you can see. It does make a lot of mess. So this is one of my least favourite ways of doing it. The other methods are quite quick and simple and effective. This one takes a bit more time and creates a lot of mess. To be honest, this stuff, yes, when it's insulating your house, it's environmentally friendly, but when you're doing this sort of thing, making a mess, it's not great. So as I say, for doing rock faces, perfect. For doing hillsides, a bit more work involved. So I'll carry on with this, put it in place, and then we'll look at the fourth method. Fourth way I make hillsides or any sort of scenic support is some wire mesh. Now this is what they call chicken wire. Uh, you can pick this up in most hardware stores. Uh, I've used other things like um, if you have a disposable barbecues, the mesh that comes on top of those, as long as it's clean, you can use that. And you just simply just put it where you want it and just bend it into shape that you want and it will stay there quite happily. 
And what you can do is you can just put a few pins in just to secure it in place. But that's a very quick, simple way. The wire mesh gives it its own support. Nothing's going to fall behind it onto the track. And then you just layer your plaster Paris bandages over the top of that. In summary then, for creating scenic hillsides, we've got some cardboard formers, just cut out of cardboard boxes, held together with skewers, and you can glue them down, but once the plaster Paris is in position, it's going to hold it in place. The second, the easiest, is just screwed up newspaper or plastic or bubble wrap or something, as long as it's clean and dry, with some masking tape over the top, just to hold it in place. Uh, the Celotex, um, when I first seen this, I thought that sounds like a great idea, but it's messy. Um, it's a lot of carving, a lot of work involved with it. It's far better for creating rock faces than uh, hillsides. And then the final method is just using some wire mesh, some chicken mesh, or whatever mesh you can find to form the shape. So what I'm going to do now is get the plaster of Paris out, start covering the slot. It'll probably take two layers. And I'll show you that process now. I have my strips of plaster Paris all cut up, ready to go. I get big boxes off the plaster Paris bandage of eBay. This is 80 meters of it here by 15 centimeters. So it'll keep me going for a good while. As long as you store it and keep it nice and dry, it will last for ages. So I've got a paint tray here I'm going to use to damp it down. So we'll get all this set up and get going. Let's get started, take the bandage, submerge it in the water, make sure it's nice and wet, let the excess water drip off, and then you just lay it across your formers. So you want to do one layer first, let it dry, and then maybe come back and do a second layer. And then as you put it down, you just rub the plaster of Paris just to fill in all the holes and you just build it up in layers. And that's as simple as that. Now you may want to wear gloves with this because it can be quite uh, caustic and if you've got sensitive skin, you may get like skin burns or dry skin. So when you've got it on, what you want to do is overlap it So you get good coverage. And you want to rub it, just rub your hand over it, get all the plaster moved around. I'm trying to make sure there's no crinkles, but even if there's crinkles, I can just add to giving you different ground effects. on as you think is required. Generally two layers is enough, sometimes three, but once you've done this and dried it will dry into a rock solid structure. So I'm going to carry on and do that and when it's all done I'll come back and show you. There's the plaster bandage complete, gone over with at least two layers, three in some places. I smoothed it over with my fingers to try and fill in the holes. You'll see that there are some holes, but once this is dried, I'll come back and show you what I do just to give a nice smooth finish. So we'll let that dry. Uh, it'll take about, in this heat we have at the moment, probably take an hour or two to dry and fully harden. And then uh, I'll show you what I do next. One other thing I forgot to mention when you're putting the plaster bandage on, you'll notice on the bandage that one side is rougher than the other. So you want to put it with the rougher side up because that's got all the plaster on it and it just makes it easier to rub it all in. It's the next day, so I've left this overnight to dry. It's all nice and firm now. So you can see there's a few holes that haven't filled in and smoothing it over. So to fix that, I've got some plaster and some water. And what I'm going to do is mix up a little bit of plaster in the water, so you're making up a watery mixture. Give it a 
harvester. So you can use plaster, polyfiller, anything like that. And you're just making up a milky mixture. So then you're taking a brush, taking that mixture and just painting it on. Now you may have to go over this a couple of times and make sure you keep agitating the mixture as you go around and you're just painting it on and the little bits of plaster that are suspended in the water mixture will gradually fill in the holes. So usually I paint over this maybe two or three times and I find that's usually enough and it gives you a nice smooth surface then for doing the rest of the scenic sun. As well as that it'll help blend in some of the ridges that form where the uh, plaster bandage overlaps. So it's a case of just paint one layer on, leave it to dry probably for about half an hour depending on your ambient conditions. You can make up a thicker plaster application to paint on, but I just find having a watery mixture like this and going over a couple of times just gives a better finish and gives you better control as well. So there's one layer on, so I'll leave that to dry, come back in half an hour and repeat the process. It's a couple of days later, it's nice and solid. You can see how painting over with the uh, plaster solution has just filled in any of the holes and helped smooth over the edges of the plaster. You can see here now how it's turned out using the different methods. So we've got the cardboard forms in this section, screwed up newspaper here in this section, the insulation board here, and then finally the wire mesh. And you can see how it all gives shape and you can use any of those methods to create your landscaping and hillside. Uh, I did mention earlier on instead of using plaster powers as other methods I'm going to link um, above and down below here now uh, a video from Bernie at Crossways Point Junction. He uses J cloth and uh, PVA glue to create a hard shell and I'll link that video so you can see how he does that. The other way of doing it as well is uh, paper mache, which is just torn up bits of paper with um, wallpaper paste. I mean, it's an old-fashioned method. You don't see it used much anymore, but it, uh, it will give a similar effect. A nice hard shell that you could then wash over with just uh, a simple wash of plaster. So what's next? Well, I'm going to clear this up, tidy up, sweep it all off, vacuum it off, clean it off. Uh, then I'm going to paint the whole area brown. And then when we come back next time, hopefully I'll have some new lights up in here and the sensor and everything, so it'll be a bit brighter in here for filming. Um, and then we'll get on and we'll start doing the basic scenic layers on the hillside. There's another bit of work finished on the uh, layout here. So please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Leave any comments down below. Next time, as I said, be back doing the scenics on here. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.